In this video, you will learn what equipment you need to set up a hybrid meeting. In a hybrid meeting, you combine in-person and online participants into one seamless meeting experience. My name is Marcus Seppala. I have been running successful hybrid meetings for a long time, both in my Toastmasters club and in a corporate environment. And I have tried many different configurations over the years. In my experience, there are six different technical aspects that need to work in a successful hybrid meeting. Number one and two relate to audio. The participants in the room should be able to hear the online participants and the online participants should be able to hear the in-room participants. Number three and four relate to video. The participants in the room should be able to see the online participants and the online participants should be able to see the in-room participants. Number five is the software that runs the meeting like Zoom, Teams or Google Meet. And number six, which may be the most important requirement, is that you have a stable internet connection. In the video, we're going to dive deeper into each of these six categories, and I'm going to show you the equipment that I use in my meetings. This includes both premium products as well as budget choices. You can jump between the different sections of the video with the chapter markings on the timeline. And in the description below the video, I have links to all the products that I'm talking about. There you can also pick up my free video conferencing checklist. For the participants joining the hybrid meeting online only, for them it's basically a video conference. But here's one pro tip about using visual aids. If you are joining online only, make sure that any visual aids that you are using are clearly visible also in the room. It can be very easy to be tricked by the fact that you can see your visual aids clearly on your laptop screen. That does not necessarily mean that they're big enough or clear enough to be seen on the projector or on the TV in the room. Now let's move over to the equipment in the room and let's start with audio. If your budget allows it, I recommend using a conference speaker phone like this one. This is the Callisto 7200 from Poly. I can connect it to my laptop either with Bluetooth or with the USB cable that comes in the box. This Callisto 7200 currently retails for about $200. The benefit of using a conference speakerphone like this is that it handles both audio in and audio out. The device has several microphones that will pick up the voices of the in-room participants and broadcast that to the online meeting. It also has a built-in speaker that will make sure that people in the room can hear the participants who are joining online. The Bluetooth connection makes it easy for you to position the device correctly in the room. But you can connect it with the USB cable as well, and that also charges the battery. On a full charge, I can usually get about five hours of use of the Callisto 7200. If you don't want to invest in a conference speakerphone, there are plenty of good budget options as well. In my first few hybrid meetings, I used a wired lavalier mic and a Bluetooth speaker all connected to my laptop. The lavalier mic is the Boya BYM1 that I have linked in the description and it usually retails for under $20. The Bluetooth speaker that I'm using here is an old Ultimate Ears model that they don't make anymore, but it worked really well in transmitting the sound from the online meeting into the room. If you want to try a setup like this, make sure that both the microphone and the speaker are connected to the same device. In this case, it's the laptop. If you don't do that, you risk audio feedback and echo. More about that at the end of the video. Requirement number three is that the in-room participants can see the online meeting. And this requires a screen of some kind in the room. In my setup, I usually use a projector where I am projecting the Zoom meeting onto the projector screen in the room. But there is also a second screen in the room and that's the laptop screen. There are two ways you can place it. One is here at the podium. So when I'm on stage, I can actually see the online participants on the laptop screen. The second alternative is to have it onto the side. And from this position, I'm actually controlling the meeting and the speaker can see the participants who are joining online on the projector instead. Here's a power tip about placing that laptop. 
Usually I have it very close to the projector and the projector is making quite a lot of noise. One great way to eliminate this fan noise is to just enable the auto noise cancellation inside of Zoom. Requirement number four is the video feed from the room and onto the online participants. In my setup, I use my Canon M50, which is a mirrorless camera. I've mounted it on the tripod and then I've connected it with a USB cable into the laptop. This camera also has an HDMI out connection, but it has a 30 minute limit. Some cameras don't have this 30 minute limit. So before you decide on USB or HDMI, just check the specifications of your particular camera. Now, most hybrid meetings don't need a $600 camera like I'm using in here, but there are some benefits to using a real camera. One is that it's so flexible, you can adjust it on the tripod in whatever angle you need, plus you can zoom in and out with the lens, and that will really give you the best possible video quality in your hybrid meeting. In my setup, the Canon M50 is my primary camera and it is directed towards the stage where the speaker stands. It's also connected to the laptop. And that means when I activate speaker view on Zoom, it's gonna pick up that view from the stage. Are you getting value? Hit the like button. In my setup, I also have a secondary camera, which is directed towards the audience so that the online participants can not only see the speaker, they can also see the audience in the room. For the audience camera, I use a smartphone and I mount it on this smartphone tripod. This is the Joby Griptide One smartphone tripod. And that also gives me a lot of flexibility on how I want to place it on the table. In my setup, I log into the same meeting from the same account with the Zoom smartphone app. And that brings us to requirement number five, which is the software. I use Zoom in my hybrid meetings. And one thing that I love about Zoom is that I can log into the same meeting from multiple devices, but with the same user account. And that makes it super easy for me to log in from those other devices because I don't have to manually enter the meeting ID and password. I can just join the meeting from the phone just by clicking the start button, even though the meeting is already running on a different device. Another thing that's great in Zoom is that it is easy to disconnect the audio from those devices that don't need to transmit audio. This helps in eliminating audio feedback and echo. I'm going to link to a video on the end screen of this one where I talk all about different methods for eliminating audio feedback. Requirement number six for a successful hybrid meeting is a stable internet connection. Initially, I thought this would not be a problem. I assumed that everywhere there would be stable Wi-Fi, but this is not always the case, at least in my experience. The internet connection is usually provided by the venue that hosts the hybrid meeting. And our venue very recently upgraded the internet connection in our room. They actually used a power line adapter to bring the signal down to our basement room. But sometimes you will have to deal with a low capacity internet connection. And one of the things that you have to be ready for is to downscale your setup. So previously, when we had a more limited connection, sometimes I had to disconnect my second camera so that the primary camera would have enough bandwidth to work nicely. And when the capacity is really restricted, it can actually look like this. In this sample, almost all of the zoom squares here went black and none of them were showing any moving video. It's just a still image. But what kept working in this setup is the audio. So even though on my screen, I could not see almost anything, we were still able to do a successful meeting because the audio worked. So you have to be ready to downscale your setup in these cases. In just a moment, I'm going to share a bonus tip that's going to help you get started with your hybrid meetings. If you've been getting value from this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I post a new video every Thursday and they're always about helping you engage better with your audience. And here's that bonus tip. When you start running a hybrid meeting, don't overcomplicate it. 
I was able to run a hybrid meeting with just a laptop. It was for a committee meeting where we had seven people. Five of them were here in my apartment and I set up the laptop on that dining room table that you see behind me. And two people were joining online. And we were able to have a successful hybrid meeting combining online participants and in-room participants with just a laptop because a laptop has a camera, a screen, a microphone, and some speakers. So if you want to try organizing a hybrid meeting, I recommend that you get started with the gear you already own. And when you're ready to upgrade, check out some of the products that I've been talking about today. I have links to all of them in the description below the video. If you want to avoid one of the biggest problems in hybrid meetings, check out the video on the screen now. That's my video about how to eliminate audio feedback and echo in hybrid meetings. This is where the different devices bleed audio through to each other. So check out that video now. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.